Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. I've been pretty busy lately. I just started a job here in Boston where I actually get to be making circuit boards, which has been really fun because it relates to my studies of electrical engineering. Anyways, in this video, we're going to be talking about different ways of measuring currents. More specifically, measuring DC current with a clamp ammeter and the way these things work, which I think is fascinating. So let's get started. First of all, I'd like to thank Kaiweet's Tools for sending me a brand new ACDC clamp meter to play with. This thing is awesome. The first and arguably easiest way to measure current is with good old Ohm's law, E equals IR. Voltage equals current times resistance. Ohm's law basically holds that for a given resistor, the voltage across it is going to be equal to the current going through it multiplied by its resistance. In this case, we have a 1 ohm resistor with 1.77 amps flowing through it, and a voltage across it of 1.78 volts, which makes sense because according to our equation, our resistance is 1, so the current should equal the voltage across it. This works, and it typically holds for both AC and DC circuits, as long as the resistor we're using doesn't have any inductive or capacitive elements. Using Ohm's law to measure the current in a circuit is as easy as taking a resistor, if in known resistance, and putting it in series between the source of voltage and the load. Here you can see we have a resistor here, and by measuring the voltage across it, we can measure how much current flows. But there are some problems with this. First of all, resistors have a tendency to waste energy. If you have a resistor of a high enough resistance, then as current flows through it, there's going to be a voltage drop, which is what we're measuring. And that voltage drop, along with the current going through the resistor, is going to cause energy to be lost in this circuit. Now, this typically isn't too bad for small, low current circuits, but the more current you put through the circuit, the bigger problem this can be. This problem can be minimized by adding a smaller resistor here, which means that there will be a smaller voltage drop, and therefore less heat wasted, and less likely chance of your resistor catching on fire. But it also means that you have less voltage to measure, which means you're going to need more precision circuitry here to see how much voltage is across this resistor. And that introduces possibilities of noise messing up your values and making it less accurate. Another problem here is that you physically have to put something in series with your circuit, which can sometimes be annoying to do. This method is used in quite a few different meters. For instance, in this old analog meter, there is a resistor here of a very small value that is used for measuring current. In this one, you can see it goes up to 10 amps, and it probably has a piece of metal that two wires are attached to, so it has a very, very low resistance. Although this method of measuring current may be annoying in that you have to put something in series with your circuit and may have the highest chance of causing resistors to release the magic smoke, it is by far the most precise way of measuring current. Let's now talk about clamp meters. The first and cheapest kind of clamp meter is an AC clamp meter. In case you didn't know, AC or alternating current is when the voltage switches back and forth from positive to negative many times per second. In the case of the United States, this happens in a sine wave that looks a little bit better than the one that I drew, and it happens 60 times per second. In the case of DC current, there is a voltage that stays constant. So here's the setup. I have my Variac connected through a 600 ohm resistor, and a wire that I can clamp my clamp meter around. When I turn on this Variac, you're able to read plain and clear that there are 100 milliamps flowing through this wire. Now this would absolutely not work if there was DC current flowing through this wire. This only works because the current flowing through this wire is switching back and forth 60 times per second. Why is that? The answer to this question boils down to a couple basic laws of physics, Ampere's law and Faraday's law. So Ampere's law looks a little bit complicated, but basically what it boils down to is if you have an electric current flowing in a direction, then there's going to be a magnetic field that flows around it. This part of the equation is called an integral, and basically it adds up the magnetic field at every point around this loop of the wire. That is equal to this, called mu naught, which is a universal constant, 
times the current enclosed in this loop, which in this case is the current flowing through this upwards wire. This clamp meter looks like a perfect loop, and inside this loop there is this layered metal that conducts a magnetic field. So, we can boil down the magnetic field that's going in this loop to this equation. The magnetic field equals mu naught, which is that constant, times the current flowing through that loop, divided by the circumference of the loop. Great! We just figured out how to calculate the magnetic field going through this loop. But how does that translate into trying to figure out how much AC current is going through here? Well, that comes down to another great law called Faraday's Law. In its simplest form, Faraday's Law states that if you have a magnetic field going somewhere, and you put a loop around that magnetic field, loop of wire, then the electric field around that loop of wire is going to be equal to the negative time derivative of the total magnetic field that's passing through that loop. A time derivative, put into easier to understand terms, is basically how fast something is changing. So for instance, if we had a magnetic field that started at zero, there was no magnetic field, and really quickly it grew to a large magnetic field, then this value would be very big. But if this same magnetic field grew to the same height but took a lot longer to do it, then this number would be smaller. So that's what a negative time derivative is, and negative just means this value is obviously negative. So if you had a magnetic field that was increasing, the electric field would go in this way around it. Whereas if you had a magnetic field that was decreasing, the magnetic field would go this way around it. In our example here, we're using alternating current, which makes this work. Because the electricity is flowing one way through the wire, and then back to the other way, which means that that current is constantly changing directions, which means the magnetic field is constantly changing directions too. Because that magnetic field is changing directions, that means that if we put a coil of wire around that loop, then we can see an electric field on it. This method of measuring current with a clamp meter works all fine and good when you're using a changing magnetic field that comes along with AC current, but how about DC current, where the magnetic field around this wire stays constant and doesn't change? We can't use Faraday's law because this whole side of the equation just becomes zero because that magnetic field is not changing. So that rules out the possibility of using that. Luckily though, Ampere's law still holds because we still have a current flowing through that wire. So there's still gonna be a magnetic field. It just won't be changing. So how do we measure that? As it turns out, there's a really cool device called a Hall effect sensor, which lets you measure a magnetic field. And that is precisely the part that allows an awesome DC clamp meter like this to work properly. If this clamp meter had a wire going through it that was carrying an electric current, then there'd be a magnetic field going around this loop. If I open it up, you wouldn't really be able to see this, but there'd be electromagnetic field lines that pointed from one side to the other side. So, if I were to insert a Hall effect sensor there, then it would be able to measure those electromagnetic field lines, and therefore the strength of the magnetic field going around this loop, and the strength of the current flowing through this wire. This DC clamp meter, in fact, does have a Hall effect sensor somewhere in this ring, and you can see that it works because if I supply a DC current, wow, there you go, 10.2 amps, 10.3 amps, it's pretty exact. You can see it's measuring the amount of current flowing through that wire. To test out this Hall effect sensor, I hooked it up to 5 volts, ground, and then the output to my oscilloscope. If I move a hard drive magnet near it, you can see that it changes the voltage that is shown on the oscilloscope. It's very sensitive. This is kind of fun to play with. <laughs> now here's an interesting experiment. I'm going to take this clamp meter that's only rated for AC. I'm going to try to measure DC current using this Hall effect sensor. So I'll kind of bend the sensor out and clamp it between the two parts of this clamp meter. You can see the Hall effect sensor is clamped in between the clamps of this AC clamp meter. Then we have the wires from my power supply, which I can adjust the current flowing through it going through the loop. Let's see if this works. Well, it did change a little bit. Not very much though. You can see it does increase a slight bit when I turn up the current, and it does decrease when I turn down the current. But you can't see the change that much. I guess that just goes to show how sensitive the circuitry needs to be to amplify that small signal from the Hall effect sensor. I'm sure it's also designed quite a bit better than just putting a Hall effect sensor between 
two parts of an AC clamp meter. But that's kind of how a DC clamp meter works, and it's really interesting. As a side note, one of these cool DC clamp meters, there is a secondary coil that's wrapping around this loop, and that coil is there to help degauss it. Because after a while of running current through, you might put a little bit of a magnetic field on that loop, and that wouldn't be good, because that would mess up your readings. So there's a coil there that when you press the zero button, it's able to actually degauss the coil. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something interesting in this video. I sure had a lot of fun making it, and I've had a lot of fun using this DC clamp meter. So go check out the description. There's a link to where you can buy one of these. They are awesome. Also, there will be a link to where you can buy your own little Hall Effect sensor to play with if you have that in an oscilloscope. They're really fun to measure the magnetic fields of like fridge magnets and anything else that might have a magnetic field. But anyway, thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.